Good morning to you. Good to see you here. I is tired. Sorry, Cynthia, that was not correct English, I know. And Ms. Vic, who taught me English, yes, I know, but, but it was fun to say. Uh, but it, it, uh, we had a great week at camp. Thank you all for praying for us and those who helped Gabe. We'll, we'll, uh, we got back last night, a uh, little, little past uh, projected, so that's okay, about 11 something. And so we, uh, yeah, we're tired. It's all good. But, um, but, but God is good and, and good things. And we were having two baptisms after the service this morning. So praise the Lord for that. Um, results of the camp. So uh, that is worth it. No amount of money can even put into that. So uh, we're thankful for that. So you continue praying for us. Come back tonight uh, as our youth share about, about our camp trip. Uh, that'll be six o'clock. You don't forget to be here at five and, and we'll go over a few things there. Tonight at seven, the worship uh, pastor search committee meeting will be in the choir room. You see the little list there. You can pray for, for us and, and um, those there. Um, the associational WMU meeting will be on July the 15th. That's Saturday. Correct, Miss Patricia? That's this Saturday. It's going to be at Little Pass and um, at 9 o'clock in the morning doing Christmas in July. We did Christmas a few just this week, too, so it's all right. But Christmas in July, uh, it says bring a mug or a cup for a white elephant exchange. Meet at 8 at the, in the parking lot here if you want to ride together. If you have any questions, contact Miss Patricia about that, okay? So that'll be, that'll, that'll be this, this Saturday, okay? So that's a neat little thing for WMU to be involved in. Uh, I think that is, oh, whoa, whoa, yeah. Wednesday night, be here at regular stuff, t ten, uh, Thursday. At 10 o'clock, we're having a VBS Workers Appreciation Brunch in the FLC. Brunch means food, okay? But uh, that, that's good. Uh, but also, uh, we're gonna have some like some some feedback, positive feedback, just how things went, and so kind of kind of talk about it. So uh, those are all able to do that. I know some of you are got jobs, won't be able to be there, but if you can, we would love you to do that. Don't forget about the the trivia night at the end of this month on the 29th. Um, where's Tyler? I saw you. Okay, we we getting several signed up already. And okay, seven teams. Okay, and if you don't have a team, it's okay. Uh, put your name up there or talk to Tyler, and we'll we'll make a team for you. It's okay if you don't know anything. It's fine. Uh, it, it's all right. And, and some people would say like this: I like to win anyway, so that's good. Uh, but uh, that's a good fellowship night. Uh, five o'clock. Jambalaya, or you can call it jambalaya, um, and then trivia starts at the six. It's, it really is a good time, and, and that uh, helps our um, college folks. They're going to the the Ark in um, Kentucky, so uh, great, 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 great time. We're glad to be in God's house this morning. Oh, Miss Miss Lucy, yes, ma'am, I see that hand. So you can see see that they'll be in the uh, foyer, in the foyer outside. Absolutely. Thank you, thank you, Miss Lucy. Um, if you're a first time guest, we'd like a record of your visit. In the back, a little pew there. Look and see. There's something to fill out. Uh, and then there's a little box in the back. You can place it there just so we can have a record of it. We can give you send you a card. Say thank you for coming. And uh, we we, uh, we we glad to be here. Y'all good. Youth, y'all good? I see spur, spur acts here and there. Yeah, Lucy says, yeah, she's good. All right, good deal. Yeah, because we've already been at it a long time by now. Uh, this week, they were up early. They don't sleep in late at camp. So we, we had our uh, prayer groups every morning at 7.15 and sometimes early and walk around and breakfast at 7.30 and moving on. And then up late at night, too. So, yay, it's all good. But God is good. And uh, we're, we're glad to be here in his house this morning to worship him. I'd ask you to stand. Find somebody you didn't talk to yet. Say, hey, glad to see you this morning.
All right, let us pray. Amen. Father, in Jesus' name we pray. Lord God, we thank you we can come here today, Lord, to worship and praise your name. Lord, you inhabit the praises of your people, Lord Jesus. Lord, we pray as Brother Eric brings your word, Lord, that it would fall upon our ears and our hearts, Lord Jesus. And we can take, Lord, what we learn, Lord, today and show your love, Lord, to the world, to the community, Lord, to our families, Lord, that they may come to know you, Lord, and have that everlasting life. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's worship the Lord together this morning. is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly trust in Jesus' name. Hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly trust in Jesus' name. Christ alone. Cornerstone, weak made strong in the Savior's love. Through the storm, He is Lord, Lord of the Lord. When darkness seems to hide, Face. I rest on his unchanging grace in every high and stormy gale. My anchor holds within the veil. My anchor holds within the veil. Savior's love through the storm. He is Lord, Lord of all. He is Lord, Lord. Each 
shall come with trumpet sound. Oh, may I then in him be found, dressed in his righteousness alone, faultless to stand before the throne. Christ alone, cornerstone, weak made strong in the Savior's love. Through the storm, He is Lord, Lord of all. Christ alone. In the Savior's love, through the storm, He is Lord, Lord of all. stood before creation, eternity in your hands. You spoke the earth into motion, my soul now. Sin weighed upon your shoulders, my soul now to stand. So what can I say? And what can I do? But offer this heart, oh God. Completely to you. So I walk upon salvation, your spirit alive in me. Life to declare your promise, my soul now. What can I say? And what can I do? But offer this heart, oh God, completely to you. So what can I say? And what can I do but offer this heart, oh God, completely to you? So I'll stand with arms high and heart abandoned. In all of the one who gave it all, how stand my soul, Lord, to you surrendered all. I am is yours. So how 
stand with arms high and heart abandoned in all of the one who gave it all how stand my soul Lord, to you surrendered all i am is yours so i'll stand with arms high and heart abandoned in all of the one who gave it all i'll stand my soul lord to you surrendered all i am is yours Stand with arms high and heart abandoned in all of the one who gave it all. I'll stand my soul, Lord, to you surrendered all I am is yours. rages on as storm and tempest roar we cannot win this fight inside our rebel hearts we're laying down our weapons now we raise our white flag we surrender all to you, all for you. We raise our white flag, war is over, love has won, love has won. Here on this holy ground, you made a way for peace laying your body down you took our rightful place freedom song is marching on we raise our white flag we surrender Your love has won. We lift the cross, lift it high, lift it high. We lift the cross, lift it high, lift it high. We lift. The cross lifted high, lifted high. We live 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 the cross lifted high, lifted high. We live. The cross lifted high, lifted high. We raise our white flag. We surrender all to you, all for you. We raise our white flag. War is over, love has come. 
your love has won. We raise our white flag, we surrender all to you, all for you. We raise our white flag, the war is over, love has won, your love has won. Lift the cross, lift it high, lift it high, we lift the cross, lift it high, lift it high, we lift the cross, lift it high, lift it high, we lift the cross, lift it high, lift it high. You can be seated. Good morning, everyone. I hope y'all are doing great this morning. I'm about to sing a song. It's called Greater Is He. We face all kinds of things in our lifetimes, but isn't it awesome that he is greater? face a giant in over my head help me to look up I take a deep breath and take the next step though I may be weak I know who is with me and greater is he living in me than he who is in the world whatever may come his strength is enough my heart is at peace for greater face an ocean the waves are raging help me to look up you'll do what I can't and I'll walk on dry land I'll step out on the sea Cause I know who is with me And greater is he Living in me Than he who is in the world Whatever may come His strength is enough My heart is at peace For greater Greater is he, my heart is at peace, 
for greater is He. If you have your Bible with you, and I hope you do, if not, you can follow along on your phone, tablet, whatever you have. Um, just no Facebooking or fruit cutting or rope cutting, all right? I don't know if you even know what that means, but it's a game the kids play, and it wears me out. Ding, ding, ding! So if I hear that, anyway, so, well, thank you, Miss Jeanette, um, and I can tell you, we've walked through this life for 20 years together, and I've watched her struggle and battle through cancer and losing a child, and that is certainly the testimony that she carries. And I'm very, very proud and honored to call her my wife, and I appreciate the way you've loved me, sweetie. Well, I'm still learning things about this state you call Louisiana. So we went out in the boat the other, I guess it was Friday, and the wind wasn't blowing, and I have wanted so bad to get away from the, right, the marsh and go to see the real fish. Well, all I had was a couple of catfishing poles, because where I come from, you really don't even need a pole with drag, right? You just, right, this is a big fish. So we went out there, and the wind was really was quiet, and I got introduced to something. It's called the horse fly. And uh, while it was really nice that we could be that far out in the ocean, and, and it was nice on one hand, and then I looked around and I couldn't see anyone. And it dawned on me, this is dangerous. This is for big boys. And I'm still growing up. So anyway, at one point, we're catching fish like crazy. And at one point, Janae goes, Eric, are you okay? And all I'm doing is standing in the front of the boat just doing this, and I look down, and there's blood just rolling down my ankles. That's how much I love at fishing. Also, blood thinners. Them horse flies found them blood vessels and just wore them out. And so I'm thinking, my goodness, Lord, could you make life more miserable in Louisiana? It's hot. The bugs are literally eating my flesh. But I'm the idiot standing out here. And then that, we had thrown that big pole out, and then all of a sudden it just takes off, and I hear Jeanette grab it. She goes, Eric! 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 Go get it! Go get it! And man, I, guys, I've never seen anything do that. So man, I was excited. And so I try to get it back, and I fall. I'll just flat, almost in the boat, roll over. I'm all banged up. And then I get up, and I'm just crawling to get back to pole, because I was thinking, it's going to take her away. And if she goes away, there's nobody to help. And we can't lose that fish. <laughs> and so, hey, it didn't last long. It broke off. And I was just devastated. Because I've never, ever seen anything like that happen. And so we rigged them both. And I was like, Jeanette, that's some big reds we were after. We're going to get them. So we set two poles up. I think I'm talking to Jeanette. And I hear, Eric, Eric, Eric. Boy, that one's going, and so I grab it, and I'm fighting. And then, just br look, I bought a used aluminum boat. And I had a pole in the, something hits that one and just rips the fiberglass. And I don't know what's out there, folks, but I'm convinced. <laughs> it's big. So finally, we get one in, and it's the ugliest, dumbest shark who had teeth. And so... As I was looking at it, I was like, Lord, we have fought the heat. We have literally been eaten alive by horse flies. And the fish we catch could eat us too. <laughs> what is safe about this place? <laughs> Everything, literally, is built to eat you. So as much fun as we're having, it is beginning to wear on me. If you have a remedy for horse flies, I don't care if it involves diesel or gasoline. I need your recipe. I can't do that again. And here's the other thing about them. Y'all's bugs aren't just tenacious, not just mean, and have teeth. They're tough. You can slap them dudes and you can hear them giggle. <laughs> I mean, it's like, hee <laughs> hee. 
They don't even go away. I hit one. He crawled off, crawled back up, and bit me again. And I just said, Lord, I think, listen, if you don't like horror, I'm convinced those things are going to spend an eternity in hell. So all I know is, folks, you better get yourself right with Jesus because you don't want to know them horse flies. Well, Galatians chapter 2. I hope you've had a good week. I know our camp crew's probably looking forward to a nap. It was so good to see the boys come home. Sounds like they had a great time. Thank you to, uh, to the adults that took a week off and went and sacrificed and served for the spiritual benefit of our children, which directly um, has an impact on the spiritual benefit of this church. And so again, thank you. Thank you, parents. Thank you for those that gave for scholarships. Um, just many sacrifices went into making this week a success. Well, I'm going to talk about a very familiar passage. And the farther, and this is not a, a braggadocious statement, you'll understand in moments. The farther I get with Christ, or in my understanding of Christ, the farther I realize I have to go. And one of the things I've tried to figure out is, Lord, what does it mean to be a Christian? Is it just about being nice? Is it just about being patient and kind and, and maybe some beatitudes? There's certainly nothing wrong with. But Lord, when do I really know that I'm walking as you want me to walk? That I'm talking as you want me to talk? When I have the peace, because folks, I'm a warrior. Jeanette, rock solid. I create problems four weeks before they exist. I can dream up a scenario. The other day I was driving and some lady was walking. And folks, we live in the middle of the sugar cane fields. And right now you'll get lost in them things. I was look so we used to know where we were going. And now I don't even know where to turn, leaving my own home. You can't see everything safe. So anyway, I saw this lady riding her bike. And I thought, you know what? That's really unsafe. Because something bad happened back home when I was younger to, to a young lady. And I'd come home and I was like, Jeanette, I just saw this lady riding all alone out in the sugar cane field on her bike. And I think that's dangerous. And I actually said to her, Jeanette, or is it maybe a problem with me that I'm creating a scenario that doesn't even exist? So anyway, I'm, I'm processing a lot of things. And I'm going to ask you to process them with me this morning in a very, very familiar, probably one of the most memorized verses in all of Scripture. But what does it mean to be a Christian? How do I know that I'm trying to do right, that I'm following Christ? What, what does that look like? And, and I've heard about faith and righteousness, but what does it look like in my life? And how do I know it when I see it? in the life of another, not to judge, but how do I recognize that? And so I think I've, this passage has just been placed on my heart that I've been meditating on the past few weeks in an effort to understand and apply, and I hope it's encouraging to you this morning. And in no way does it bring guilt or shame, as that's the tools of the evil one, but that you'll be convicted and encouraged to a life of righteousness to the level and capacity that Christ desires for you. You ready to go? Say amen. Let's go. If you would stand out of recognition for God's infallible, inerrant word, serving as the final authority on all matters of faith and practice. Doesn't matter what you think about it, friend. I'm not being unkind to you, but if you disagree, you, are, you stand incorrect. And I pray God has mercy and grace in that correction. Verse 20, it says, I have been crucified with Christ and I no longer live, but it's Christ who lives in me. The life I now live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. Lord, I love you and I thank you for the time that we have. And I thank you for your patience, your grace, your mercy, the forgiveness that you bestow upon me unworthingly every day. And Lord, I pray after our time together this morning, we'll have a better grasp, a greater desire more willingness and more discipline in doing what you've called us to. And it is in the name of the sovereign King Jesus we pray. Amen. You be seated, friend. So as I was finishing the degree in counseling, I was introduced to a concept called exchanged life Christianity. And so most of the time when we ask someone about their relationship with Christ, we ask have you ever been saved? 
Or have you given your life to Christ, Jesus? So that's kind of our, our marker there. But what that introduces is a concept that's very one way. And so when I was introduced to this exchange life principle, it was kind of revolutionary. Not against what scripture says, but it had a dimension in a dynamic I'd never been introduced to in understanding my relationship with Jesus Christ. So before, had I been saved, which was Christ saving me from the eternal consequences in the presence of sin and giving me a home in heaven. Okay, we're getting this. And then, or had I given my life to Christ. So I gave it to him or he saved me, but we rarely put those together. We compartmentalize that our relationship with Christ is I gave him my sin. I gave him my sin. I don't have to worry about that stuff anymore. But then the question remains, how now shall we live? How does that change? And so what exchange life, doctrine, theology, principle is, is that no, no, Christ didn't just save me. I didn't just give my life to Christ. We exchanged lives. You see, I, I was crucified in Christ, so I no longer live. I died to the flesh. And when I died, he gave me the presence of the Holy Spirit to equip and empower me to a life of righteousness. You see, the wages of my sin was death. He took my sin and death on the... Oh, man! It's like Pictionary up here. Let's do this thing. That's probably one of my favorite. And let me mention, I'm really good at it, too. So if ever you want to play, bring it on. So he took that, and then he gave. So it's not just me giving him my life. It's me accepting... His life in my mortal flesh for this finite timeline on earth. And so when the scripture says here, I am crucified. I have been crucified. It's saying it's already happened. Romans tells us, right? Jeremiah tells us that, man, he knew you before he formed you. He knew you before the foundation of the earth. Your salvation was not a revelation to the heavens. It had been set in stone. And when that, that event occurred, and again, I've talked about it on Wednesday night, that all, of the, all the terminology that revolves around salvation has to do with a fiscal economy, redemption, justification. And so remember, we were enslaved to sin. We were in bondage. How many of you remember the story of Hosea? All right, Hosea and Gomer. The Lord told Hosea, you take a woman, you love a woman who's going to be unfaithful to you. She was unfaithful time and time again. And finally, she was found out and she was brought, listen, she was brought to the auction block to be sold into slavery. Hosea was in the audience as they took his wife, humiliated her before the audiences. And then the bidding started. Who wants her? Hey, I'll bid. And then Hosea being in the audience and looking around and thinking, what would they do to my wife? I love her. Though she's been unfaithful, I love her. I'll bid. And Hosea kept bidding. And as Gomer was up there on that block watching who was bidding, it should have been very much to her surprise that there was Hosea. The husband that she had harmed. The man's life who... By heaven, she more or less destroyed his hopes and his dreams, his expectations of marriage. What is he doing bidding? He bids, and he bids, and he wins. And Scripture says that he goes over, and again, she, she's been disciplined, stripped. And he holds her, and he says, you listen. From this day forward, you're going to be mine. And from this day forward, I'm going to be yours. I don't want you playing the harlot anymore. 
I don't want you pursuing other men, other dreams, figments of your imagination. You pursue me. Our life of Christ, we were in bondage. We were slaves to sin. And Jesus bought us with his, yes. The wages of sin is death without the shedding of, there's no remission of sin. You see, so I was on the auction block in bondage to sin. And I had played the harlot with the cares of the world. Scripture tells us to stop being an idolater. Quit being an adulterer. Pursue the person of Jesus Christ. Because by legal terminology, you have been crucified. You know what crucifixion means? Not just death. Nope. The longest death imaginable. What the Romans would do. What, and we talked about this on Easter. What they did to Jesus Christ They specialized in amputating, dissecting live human bodies, criminals, to figure out what they could do to a person to make them miserable and go through tremendous pain without dying. So literally, they just peeled the skin off of Jesus. Peeled the skin off of him. I don't know if you realize this, but when you peel the skin and the membranes, there's nothing holding the inside in. Why do you have trouble carrying the cross? And we talked about this in Easter. Because his hands were busy holding something else together. So this life, I didn't just get saved. Oh, that's glorious in itself. But I, you, every believer, didn't just get saved. There was an exchange that happened. You see, my sinful man begin a process Scripture calls sanctification. Which it is the process whereby from the point of salvation to the point of me entering into the heavenlies, every day, every moment, every trial, every obstacle should be bringing me closer to the person and the purpose of Jesus Christ than I've ever been before. A lot of us have this first event. We were saved. Saved to or from. You see, I don't agree with scaring people away from hell. Listen, I'm not saved from hell. I'm saved to the person of Jesus Christ. You see, it's not just saved from. It's saved too because an exchange happened. So I'm crucified. Now here's the catch. This old man is stubborn Ignorant, determined, Im- unkind, impatient. I got blood sugar issues when I get hungry. Right? I got migraine headaches to put me in a bad mood. Do you realize how I was telling you the other day? My pet peeve is waiting. <laughs> waiting for anything. If I go somewhere to eat and it's longer than 15 or whatever I consider rational with whatever mood I'm in, the family will tell you I have a list that we keep going. They're on the list means I ain't going back, right? So I go in, and I start really positive. I mean, I go in like, Lord Jesus, prepare me, cover me with the, the scarf of the Spirit and the shield of faith and the shod me with a, right? Get my sword, and I go in, hey. And then things start falling apart. They don't see me. Oh, but they see me. Or the order takes longer than I feel like it should. Now you notice, I try to equip myself for something that I'm going to destroy. No one else should have the power to take the testimony of Jesus Christ away from me because I've been crucified. When I go in, my expectations, here's another thing, my agenda with time. You know what? I got things to do. You ever thought that? You ever told somebody, I wish you'd hurry up, I got things to do? You know what the truth is? You ain't got nothing to do other than what you're doing right now. 
Because if you believe God's sovereign, we watched Little Mermaid yesterday. Oh my gosh. <laughs> little baby princess, that was our last little, hey, what do you want while the boys are gone? Spoiling her, you know how you gotta do. But they actually said a statement in the movie that I was like, wow. I mean, it was cute. It was cute. I have nothing um, other than its creator. But hey, they said, why is, it you get, why is it we get caught up in what should be rather than what is? Now, think about the statement, should be. doesn't mean it is. It means I think it should be. So I'm going through life trying to fix the incompetence and the lostness of everyone around me so that they meet my agenda. And when they don't, I show disfavor upon them. Now let's think. Gomer sure, sure disappointed Hosea. What did he do? He still loved her. What did Christ do for me? Every time I disappoint him, every time I get an agenda, well, Scripture just tells me I'm crucified, so guess what? I don't get to care what I think I need to do with the day ahead of me. It is up to and for Christ. Now, hey, have a plan. But if we can't be flexible enough to integrate God's sovereignty into our purpose, we've lost what it means to be a believer. So let's look at some of these things real quick. Our time's about, I'm hungry. We got some barbecue chicken in the crock pot and I can't quit thinking about it. And I put a little extra barbecue when mama wasn't looking. Anyway, you know, if a little's good, a lot's better. That's just, that is such a truth. Not really. I died to self, so that means, that means I died to my opinions. Whoa, the... The world is not waiting for my opinion. You know, it's the craziest thing. I, I so seldom have people coming to me and say, hey, what do you think? You know, do, do you like it? Is everything okay? Can we do anything for you? It's just not the way the world goes around. So my opinion, if my opinion is destructive, if my opinion is not encouraging and inspirational, what good is it? Because guess what? They don't care enough to listen. So I'm just going to go vomit my impatience and my unkindness on someone who really doesn't care. So Lord, I don't like this. I gotta, I've got to die. My opinions, my thoughts. Oh, Scripture tells us to hold every thought captive. You know, that means it means you got to catch it. That means you know it's running around. You got you to gotta pin it, corner it, and catch it. Words. I like words. Words can express the most miserable, broken, harmed heart. Or the heart that has been set free. What do, what do your words do to your spouse, to your kids? My feelings. Well, I have feelings about everything. Sometimes my feelings get hurt. Sometimes I get angry. But you know what this is telling me is that i got to surrender my feelings for the how I... It's not that I can't feel. I've got to surrender my feelings... And my feelings become his feelings. So before, when I felt a way about a situation, I got to say, and we all used to wear them bracelets, right? Is this me? Or is this how Christ would approach this? Is I've got to exchange. Lord, I need you to take this man that I am away. And give me more of the Holy Spirit. And guess what? It's not getting easier. The satanic attacks are unreal. You me tell you a crazy story? Y'all don't make fun of me, okay? This is personal. Real personal, not really. It's just weird, all right? So I was prepping last night, thinking through yesterday, this morning. And this morning, what was it, four? I have a small snoring issue, okay? 
Um, I have one of those robotic machines that breathe for me at night. They're one of the most attractive things I've ever put onto the bedroom. <laughs> well, I don't like it. And so I decided I'd quit wearing it. Well, last night, you probably, if you have sleep apnea, you've had these dreams where you're drowning. That means you're snoring so loud, your body ain't letting you breathe, so you won't snore and wake yourself up. It was crazy. So I woke up going, Duh! and then, so what, I can't, please don't make fun of me. This is crazy. What's that hanging down thing? The uvula. I don't know if you're aware that most of you have one. So my tonsils are, anyway, the doctor's like, that's the biggest uvula I've ever seen. It's gross. You need to cut that out. But that's what they always want to do, cut it out. I'm like, God gave it to me. It's fine. So I got to snore so much it gets flopping around. Okay, I know this is this may seem weird, but it's it's Sunday morning at 4 a.m. and I wake up. And I was like, Jeanette, I can't breathe. So it, it gets irritated and it swells up like an apple. You know what it is to have an apple hanging in the back of your throat. So I was like, I can't breathe. <laughs> it flop up on my tongue, and then I start gagging. Then I have to swallow it. And I'm like, Jeanette, and I just, I just, this is spiritual warfare and sleep apnea. So I said, Jeanette, I don't have anybody to fill in. You almost got a call this morning at four. I was like, Paul's asleep. He's tired. And so I said, Jeanette, just pray over me and read the Bible. So I just laid there. Jeanette read the whole book. Not very long. It's not very long, but the book of James. I sat there and I listened to praise and worship music until that thing went down and I could breathe. <laughs> So we're going to suffocate and it's gone. Now, just crazy stuff. You see, whenever you decide, the Lord, I'm going to give you the filth of this world. I'm going to give you my disobedience. I'm going to give you my agenda. I'm going to do this thing. Guess who's paying attention? The depths of an eternal deprived hell. And man, you think he won't stop at nothing to deter you? Oh, it's about to get crazy up in here when we get on fire for the Lord. You usually might have a problem. Just call me. I'll walk you through it, all right? <laughs> it's going to be crazy, but it's a wild ride. Oh, Listen, I didn't just gave, give my life to Christ. He gave me his life. When he, when he sacrificed that life on the cross, it wasn't just figuratively. It was spiritually. So that the spirit of the living God at the moment of my salvation was placed inside of me. So again, this wasn't a one way. Scripture is better interpreted old and new covenant, not testament. Testament is one way. Covenant is an agreement between two parties. I made an agreement with Christ. A legally binding, eternal covenant. Now listen. I've been living it one way. My way. And this ain't Burger King. <laughs> I thought that was funny. Y'all didn't. Wow, y'all tough. So, going back, my actions, my relationship, my expectations, my worries. Christ has got to take those. Now, now I've always wondered, what does it mean to live by faith? And I, I tried to come up with a definition that would be most beneficial and hopefully clear for us all. So here's how I'm going to define living by faith. Living in such a manner... That God's mercy, the mercy that he has for me, the grace, those things that I have in my life that are not by my merit, but on his goodness, his love. Oh, friend, you can't lose sight of his love. All of this was for you because he loves you. And there's nothing you can do to take that love away. You can fight it, but you can't take it away. In his sovereignty, his position over all of creation, 
compel me to surrender my life in every aspect to his lordship. That his mercy, grace, and love, all oh, those things, his sovereignty, that he's got this thing under control. He's not mis... News brief. He is not mismanaging the universe. The universe is rebelling against him, and he's given it a certain amount of time, and that, t- that time's winding down, right? All right, let's make sure we keep it clear. Now, Lord, I thank you for the time that we've had together, and I pray again that it's been encouraging and beneficial, that my agenda in no way has sought to be accomplished with that agenda of the eternal King, And Lord, I want to thank you for the life and the cross, the life and the cross. But also, Lord, when you died, the life that you gave me. Lord, it's a life where I choose you. Or I I choose me, to be honest. And so, Lord, I pray that we would all consider in a greater capacity what it means to be crucified with Christ. Amen. I'm going to ask you to stand. We're going to go through a brief time of invitation as those here for baptism prepare. Friend, if you've been visiting this church and you'd like to make this your church home, you can come. Uh, I'd love to meet with you and your family, uh, but if you're ready to do that. But if you've been visiting, you'd like to join, you'd like to know more, please message me. Call the office. We'd love to have you over at our house. Spend some time with you, answer any questions. Again, we got some barbecue chicken we can throw together. If you've never accepted Jesus Christ. So, if there's never been that point where you would say, I did give my life to Christ, friend, please, please come down. Let me pray with you. Let me spend some time with you this week. Whatever, I will do whatever I can do without sin to lead you to Jesus Christ. Lord, whatever it is you need to do over the next few moments, you have the freedom And may we have the courage to respond. In the name of Jesus, amen. Next few moments, you do whatever it is you need to do. If you've never followed in baptism, please, we need to do that as well.
result of that, we have two baptisms this morning, so we're excited about that. This is uh, Mikey Boy. Mikey is lives in Arkansas, and uh, woohoo! Woo -hoo! <laughs> Pig, suey. All right, uh, but uh, his mom came through our church, and uh, you know, I uh, we had the opportunity to, to, with Mikey to say that hey, he accepted Jesus as Lord and Savior a while back. Is that true, Mikey? But he didn't follow in obedience. And he wants to do that today, the first Sunday back. So I think that's an awesome thing. And so um, this is not saving him. He's already asked God to save him. Kind of replace what Brother Eric talked about this morning. But it's the first act of obedience. And he wants to do that picture to show you that, hey, he's, he's dying and Christ is living in him. So, Mikey, you asked God to save you? Well... Because you profess your faith in him, Mikey... I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Buried with Christ in baptism and raised to walk in the of life. This is Benjamin Hoye, and uh, we had a we had we had a opportunity to talk the other night, the other day, in, our, in my room. We that he asked God to save him, and uh, you know he's fixing to go on a trip, and I uh, wanted to, want to go ahead and do it now uh, to um, to follow in obedience. I, I'd say this is that you know he didn't come down the aisle yet. That's okay. Sometimes we can do that main thing is he asks God to save him. So he's going to be joining our church. And that's okay. I'm sure you're all okay with that, right? Yeah, absolutely. So Benjamin, did you ask God to save you? Yes, sir. Yes. So Benjamin, I'm so proud of you. And because of your profession of him, Benjamin, uh, and your being the Lord and Savior command that he's given. Okay. I baptize my brother in the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Buried with Christ in baptism, raised to walk in the And y'all, with our trip, we'll talk about more tonight. I know some of you who were pray who was praying for Benjamin this week. They, they here, raise your hand. Absolutely, especially men. And then who was praying for Mikey? Absolutely, yes, indeedy. So thank you. This power in prayer, y'all. Let's stand together and. Uh, Let's, let's close in prayer. God, we thank you so much, Father, for what you did for each of us. Father, you, you, uh, you took our place. We deserve death. We deserve hell. But God, you gave your life so we could have life in you. Father, if someone here does not know you, Lord and Savior, I pray they would not leave this place before they get it right with you. God, we thank you for all that you do, God. Bring us back tonight, Father, as we, uh, as we um, hear our youth share about what, they've done, what you've done in their lives. We love you, Lord. In your son's name we pray. Amen. Thank you.